We live in a time where the level of image quality in digital cameras is just off the chart. The crisp, sharp look of modern digital cameras just keeps on getting better and better every single year. Yet even with this, so many people are trying to emulate a vintage film look with these modern digital cameras. One reason for this is because we all love the look and the nostalgic feel of these old home videos. And we want to recreate that warm, fuzzy, nostalgic feeling that they give. So here I'm gonna show you how to achieve that look and some other effects you can add to just enhance that look. If you don't wanna go through this whole process, you can click the first link down in the description below. And from there, it'll take you to a page where you can download this exact LUT for completely free. This LUT will work with Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and Final Cut Pro, so you can use it on all your favorite editing softwares. But if you wanna do this on your own and be able to tweak some certain areas, then I'm gonna show you how to do it in DaVinci Resolve. But you can also follow along in Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro because we'll only be using the wheels and the curves for this. Okay, so I have my footage imported. I'll just select it, and then I'll head over to the color tab. From here, you can see we have our color nodes in the top right with our viewer timeline in the top left. Now below we have our wheels, then we have our curves, and then we have our keyframes. So I'm gonna select this first node, and then on my keyboard I'm gonna hold shift and then click S on my keyboard, and that will create a new node. I'm gonna do that a few times until we have five nodes. If you did not shoot your footage in a log profile, then you can just skip this step. If you did, then you'll want to convert your footage into Rec. 709. So with this first node, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to right click on it and then I'm going to go to LUT and I'm going to find Sony and convert that into Rec. 709, just like that. Now I'm not going to touch this first node because that is our conversion LUT and we'll begin with this second node. Now when you look at old film, you can tell that in the shadows, we have either a blue or teal look or sometimes a green look. Now my personal favorite is to have green in the shadows, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up my wheels down here and we'll work with our shadows. Now I'm gonna add some green to our shadows, so I'm gonna just bump that up right here. I'm just clicking it and sliding and we can see it's at point 10. Maybe point 13 will be good, just like that. And maybe let's add some slight blue, maybe go to point seven, just like that. Okay, now you can't really tell a difference in this because we don't have many shadows in the shot. But if I just bring down our curves, you can tell there is green and blue in the shadows. See if I exaggerate this, you can definitely see that. We'll um, go ahead and reset that to 13 and seven. I'll reset this curve too. Then with your midtones and highlights, you want to want to go to the opposite side of our color wheel for that. So with my shadows, I was at 0.13 for the greens. So with my midtones, I'm going to go to negative 0.13 with the greens. So negative 0.13. And then the same with the blues. So I'll go to negative 0.07. And then I'll do that as well with the highlights. So go to negative 0.13. Negative seven. So now we're left with this image. We can show the before and after just like that. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boost the saturation just slightly, maybe by five. So we'll go to saturation at 55, just because I feel like these vintage films have a lot of saturation. And we will be done with our second node. So now with our node number three, we're gonna work with the curves. So we're gonna go ahead and go to our curves. Now what I like to do is I like to create three points, one for the shadows, one for the midtones, and one for the highlights. So with the midtones, I'll drag those up slightly and I'll slightly bring down these shadows. With the highlights, you can play around either bringing them up or down. This video clip was shot at blue hour, so I'm going to just slightly bump those up just because we did not have a lot of light. If you did have a lot of light, you can bring that down to create a more smooth look between your shadows and your highlights. So we'll kind of go something like that, just like that. Then we can mess around with our RGBs. So again, we want greens and blues in our shadows, and then we want reds and yellows in our highlights. So to get a yellow, you'll go to your blue and you'll drag the blue down, and that will create yellows in the highlights, just like that. We don't want that dramatic of an effect that looks kind of bad maybe just ever so slightly you don't don't have to do much here then with our greens we want some greens in the shadows so we can raise those shadows and that will add greens so 
maybe just slightly, not much, and we can add a little bit of blues in our shadows as well, just like that. Then our reds, we want reds in the highlights, so we'll bump up the reds, maybe slightly. Now if we toggle this node on and off, we can see just the effect. Thinking that looks about good. So now we can click on this hue versus hue, and this will change the exact colors. So we can just move on toward this viewer, and our eyedropper will appear, and we can just select on the colors that we want to affect. So I'm going to choose these green, so I'll zoom in, put the green right there, and we can see that green appeared on our hue versus hue curve. So now let me zoom back out, and now we can affect just that color. So we'll change that color maybe to a deeper, richer grain, something maybe like that. And then we'll affect the sky too, so we'll select the sky, and we'll maybe put maybe ever so slightly, just like that. Then we'll go to our hue versus saturation, do the exact same, select our greens and our sky over here. And we want those greens to be very vibrant, so I'll boost the saturation on that. And then I'll boost the saturation on that one. Don't really want to affect any other colors. I may bring saturation down a little bit. These rest. Just fix it at the blues. Just play around with it. I think right there looks pretty good. And then we'll be finished with our curves. So we just finished the coloring of this clip. You can download this LUT, we'll get you these exact colors minus the conversion LUT. And for this next part, we're just gonna be adding different effects that can improve this film look. So with our fourth node selecting, we will open up our effects in DaVinci Resolve, and we will scroll down till we find film grain. Now you can see in this Resolve FX textures, you have a bunch of different textures that you can add to make your footage look vintage. My favorite is the film grain, but you can mess around with a few of these to find the one you actually like. So then I'll click on node 5. You can add a few more nodes for a few more effects. Another effect you can add is vignetting. Most film ca cameras will have a vignette. It won't be this strong, so we'll definitely bring down the size. Maybe something like that. Alright, then another effect you can add is this soften and sharpen. So this will soften your image. Now you can see that is very dramatic, so we'll bring back those large textures. Alright, and then the final one, which this is my absolute favorite effect to add, is the halation effect. So we'll scroll up till we find halation right here, and we'll add this onto that. So what halation will do is it will add a certain color to the contrasting parts of your image. So if we toggle this view isolation regions, we can see what it is viewing. We can bring it down or up. I like to affect only the highlights. And you can see it adds this reddish color to the contrasting parts between the dark areas and the light areas. And those are some of the effects that you can add for this. For me personally, I only add the film grain and the halation effect. Now if you guys have any further questions, let me know it down in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe to never miss another tutorial just like this one.